Hello, my name is Carolyn Pearson, and I work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. In this lecture, you will learn how to find and obtain historical flood data and learn how to enter that data into RMC BestFit. As a reminder, RMC BestFit supports three different data types, systematic data, interval data, and perception thresholds. This lecture will cover interval data. RMC BestFit defines interval data as data whose magnitudes are not known exactly, but are known to fall within a range or interval. Interval data is typically derived from observed historic events and is represented with a range of flows, since the exact value is often unknown or the watershed characteristics may have changed since the flood event originally took place. Some sources of information include USGS water supply papers, after action flood reports, newspapers, libraries local to the dam site, personal accounts, and historical societies. After action reports often have additional information on storms other than the one they are written about. Similar to systematic data, taking the extra time to dig up historic information can really add value to your analysis. In USACE and USBR, paleo flood studies are routinely performed for higher level dam safety studies. When positive evidence of a large prehistoric flood is discovered, it is called a paleo stage indicator, or PSI. Examples of direct evidence are floated debris or scarred trees that can be age dated using radiocarbon-14 dating and other modern dating methods. Geologists and other paleo flood team members hike along the river channel to perform field characterization of the soil geomorphology. They look for terraces that show positive evidence for past floods and also stable terraces with smooth surfaces and well-developed soil. In the photograph on the right, you can see historic alluvium exposed near the active channel downstream of a dam. Peak flow estimates for the PSI are commonly estimated using HECRAS 2D. The 2D model allows the paleo flood analysis team to estimate several hydraulic parameters, including discharge ranges and flood depths, as well as velocities, which can help estimate a flood's capacity to carry rocks and other debris. In most cases, historical flood records will be reported or modeled as peak flow. In this case, you will need to convert peak flows to an equivalent critical duration volume. This is done by examining observed hydrograph shapes. This plot shows the 2015 flood event for Blakely Mountain Dam. The peak flow of the observed event is 179,000 CFS. The maximum three-day average flow is 59,000 CFS. In this case, the peak to volume ratio is 3.03, or put another way, the three day average flow is 33% of the peak flow. Typically, it is recommended to evaluate several large observed hydrographs at a minimum, then pick a representative or average ratio or percent reduction. Historic flood records typically have large uncertainty. There are measurement errors, estimation errors, modeling errors, and natural variability in peak to volume ratios. When the uncertainty cannot be directly quantified, a good rule of thumb is plus or minus 20% of the most likely or best estimate value. This is based on the USGS guidelines for discharge measurement errors when conditions are relatively poor. The uncertainty should be quantified when there is enough information to develop a quantitative estimate. Sources of uncertainty in a recorded peak historic flood value may include changes in the watershed since the event, uncertainty regarding how the data was recorded, uncertainty about the method used to reconstruct a flood hydrograph, or uncertainties in the peak to critical duration volume ratio. If you do have information about the upper or lower bound, for example, a model that provided confidence in the upper bound because it is calibrated to a historic high water mark, you would use this information in place of the rule of thumb. The narrower the flood interval, 
or the more confident we are in that flood estimate, the greater the impact it will have on the flood frequency analysis. As with many things, development of flow intervals requires engineering judgment. Before we get started putting the data into RMC BestFit, I want to make you aware of some of the requirements of the interval data. The year must be unique. The year must be between negative 100,000 and positive 100,000. The year cannot overlap with any data in the systematic data table. The flow values must be non-negative. The lower bound value must be less than the most likely value and the upper bound value must be greater than the most likely value. In this lecture, we covered how to enter interval data into RMC BestFit. 